soon as possible. The BBC would like to say that we are... <laughs> Thank you, good morning, and welcome. I was about to say, welcome to the BBC Light programme. And now, those you have loved. No, um, it is lovely to see you all. Welcome to our congregation at home and uh, to our churches in Kings Langley, Lay Hill and Hemel Hempstead and Gaveston, where my friend Jill is preaching this morning and I've just dropped her off. So if anyone's watching this later from Gaveston at home, hello, nice to see you. Um, also greetings to our friends who have promised me they're going to watch this later, who are currently on the uh, canal boat, uh, undertaking our first attempts at canal boat ministry, or in this case, trying to join up the circuit by taking a canal boat up from Croxley Green towards Cow Roast. We have met so many different people, so many different folks from across the circuit. I even discovered, and I've got to admit, this is an embarrassment, and, but I do think I should admit to it. We were on the boat yesterday and uh, we started meeting all these different churches, many of which you will well know, uh, CPSO, uh, Carpenters, pa Carpenters Park and South Oxy, which I've never been able to see, and uh, Berry Lane were there, Croxley Green, folks from Croxley Green, and then, and then some folks joined us from Bushy Heath. I didn't even know we had a church in Bushy Heath. I am so sorry to the folks in Bushy Heath um, I didn't know you existed, but it turns out you, you do, and, and it was lovely to meet you. Uh, the superintendent minister appeared. It was an international meeting. At one point, I was on the boat with Scott, Donna Fowler's uh, partner from America, who's here from North Carolina, and uh, they were having chats to people from the Ukraine as we were going along, and various of it was like, my goodness, every, all these different people joining in. It was wonderful. Um, and we had friends who ran up the, uh, Dorothy ran up the uh, canal after us um, and, and walked with us up the canal. It was, it was super. We just saw so many folks. This morning, as if that wasn't enough, this morning, bacon rolls arrived at half past eight, which was absolutely wonderful. And folks are currently sailing up towards Berkhamsted. The boat should arrive in Berkhamsted about two o'clock. If you want to pop down and say hello, we'll be on the canal fields having our lunch, late lunch, uh, later on today. Uh, well, after the bacon sandwiches, we didn't really need lunch <laughs> too early. But from about two o'clock, we'll be around um, at Berkhamsted. So if folks want to come down and say hello, that would be lovely. Um, I've got to admit, I'm not terribly well organized this morning. Um, between canal boats and things. I've, I've only just got my head round what's going to happen this morning. Uh, if you're joining us online, I suggest that now is a good opportunity to grab some, uh, uh, some bread and uh, wine or wine equivalent or tea and cake or whatever it is so that you can join in with our communion. To congregation here in the space, we are returning to coming forward for communion. Um, as far as I know, you won't be visible on camera as you come forward, but just be aware, there's a slight chance the backs of your head may go live uh, on... on, on uh... <laughs> Don't all start checking your hair now, for goodness sake. I mean, I've been on a canal boat and it's... Uh, I'm all right, you know, we'll, 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 we'll pass muster this morning, won't we? Um, so, yes... We're... There'll be very tiny images, maybe, of the backs of your heads. So don't, don't be alarmed. Um, you know, it, 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 you're not gonna, we're not going to reveal your secret identities to the world. That's, <laughs> and it makes you sound all like uh, Clark Kent, putting your glasses on and we can't recognise you. Um, practically speaking, though, for you at home, folks, no problem at all. But here, we come down through the middle and we go out round the sides. Just because uh, it's been so long since we did it. Uh, so just be aware, um, now that we're reintroducing you, come down the middle and you go up the sides. Oh, sorry. I've got a few greetings this morning from around the world. Um, uh, Shalini says good morning to everybody. Good morning, Shalini and family. Lovely to have you with us. Um, Caroline Metham says good morning from sunny Nottingham to everyone. So, um, yeah, good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, some folk, interestingly enough, we've got at least one person uh, saying, uh, Susan Dice greets you 
Now, this is technology, isn't it? This is the wonder of technology. Good morning from aboard Dick's Folly. Uh, and I'm, I'm be able to check on... Folks, if you're watching... So they're watching us live on the boat as it goes up the canal. Um, are you going up the canal? Did you get off the muddy bank? They were a bit stuck on the muddy bank at one point, but they're all, they all went clear. Um, so lots of, lots of folks there. Susan Ricketts says, good morning from Ashridge. Well, I, I was slightly joking that it was international this morning, but I mean, Ashridge, Nottingham, I mean, it's nearly international, isn't it? Where is Ashridge? Oh, Ashridge as in the, um, the, the big... That's not international. All right, now, all right. Now, Susan, if you're watching us from Ashridge, <laughs> that's not very far. Feel free to pop in. Oh, I've dropped my phone. Now, what's the message from Jill? Oh, hang on. My, my thing's gone weird. Uh, I've lost it. I've lost it. The whole thing's falling apart. It's a bit like yesterday, really. It must be here somewhere. Um, anyway, chat amongst yourselves for a bit. Um, a normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. There we go. Oh, there's a picture of the canal boat. That's exciting. Uh, live now, morning service. Uh, what was the message from Jill Walker? Uh, <gasps> Brilliant! I will just repeat that for folks at home who might not have picked it up on the microphone. Okay. Greetings from the Jacobite steam train. Did the Jacobites have trains? <laughs> the, the Jacobite steam train en route f from Fort William to Malaig. Wow. Did anyone used to play the great game, we game of that. Britain? We train. The great game of Britain uh, on there, you have to go to uh, Malaig. I think it's one and of the. And Fort William. And Fort William. So that's fantastic. If you could take some pictures for us, uh, we're actually playing the great, great game of Britain live as a family over, ten year, over a 10-year period, and we have to get round to all the places in the country. So uh, maybe because we need to claim them. Yeah. Anyway, it, it's lovely to, lovely to be here. Now, um, we've got a couple of minutes, and I'm going to get Ruth to play us into worship. Um, for folks at home, we'll be following the sheets. If you haven't got the sheets, it's a very simple Ionia, Iona communion this morning. I'll tell you what the responses are as we go through. Um, I have a confession. Having been on a safety training course, having been prepared in every possible way for this canal boat trip yesterday, as we produced, as we got to Home Park Lock, uh, we were thrown a rope. I was trying to get a rope over the side uh, to the edge of the uh, lock and we were actually coming up in the lock and I was holding on to the rope and the rope was very wet and I thought I was leaning against the boat and against the side of the boat. It turns out I was not leaning against the side of the boat and as the slippery rope went from my hands I went backwards and into the canal. I went right under the water, and if any of you know Carol from, uh, from Kings Langley, uh, of the, uh, uh, Carol Kowalski, um, uh, if you know him, I just want to tell you, the reason I'm probably here this morning is because this huge chap just grabbed hold of me and yanked me out of the water. He was absolutely fantastic. So, uh, um, yes, uh, I got very wet, um, but actually it wasn't too bad. And, uh, and I, I just, uh, I, I was just a bit surprised, to be honest. I'd, I'd, I'd like to say it was really shocking and frightening, but the absolute truth was the only thought I could get in my head was, I thought that was the side of the boat. You know, and then I hit the water and then they pulled me out. Anyway, all, all well. So please know uh, that I uh, was re-baptised yesterday, which is not something that the Methodists believe in particularly. Um, but canal baptisms, as was suggested to me uh, yesterday, canal baptisms probably not going to take off as a, as, a, as a way of mission. Maybe canal boat ministry is a very good way of doing mission on the canals, but uh, full immersion baptisms are not recommended. <laughs> yes, so I fell in the canal. Right, um, I, just a couple of mentions. Uh, Oyster Club on Thursdays, 10.30... Uh, every other Wednesday, lunch is here. Do, do check which Wednesdays, but um, lunch is here. Absolutely fantastic. Bring friends. Come to, the, come to the lunch. Bring a friend. Have a chat. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. 
Um, I ended up, thanks to paperwork, being late getting to it last week, and um, I was very disappointed to have uh, to have missed it. But but I can I, I, I can tell you it's one of one of the great things that we do. Uh, Zoom coffee mornings every Saturday, 10 a.m. to midday. Make a cuppa. Log into Zoom and chat. There you go. Full instructions received. Um, in church donations. A plate for donations is available at the back of the church. All right, I think I've read most of the notice. Have I missed anything? Is there any piece of information that you do not have? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Well, 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 on the canal boat, we were taught that you have to check that the chap at the helm knows that everything is all right. So when you're doing the lock, you go like this. And the chap on the, on the tiller goes, you're all right. And then you crank the handles and send all the water down, you see. So this morning, we'll use the same system. I will say, are you ready? We're good, we're good to go. I'm cranking the handle. Here we go. And as I crank the handle, Ruth will magically play music. <laughs> Loving God, gather up all that is dead in me, like the leaves from the ground, into your redeeming arms, in order that you might scatter forth into the world all that you have brought to life, so that it might be shared graciously and unselfishly in the world. And for we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. This morning's service has a slightly autumnal theme. It also has a slightly boat theme. Related theme, you may spot some of the hymns. Perhaps I should have sung one of them. Uh, not that it's our first one, but uh, later on I think we've got... Um... Oh, yes, it is this one. It's this one. No, it's yes, it is. It's this one. For those in peril on the sea. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the sea, but there was definitely a moment of peril. So we should have done this yesterday, really. So we sing together our first hymn, Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arms doth... Arms doth Bind the restless wave. Uh, not many waves on the canal. Anyway, we sing together our first hymn, Stand If You're Able, 517 if you're singing at home.
do take a seat. I have to say the words of that hymn, um, uh, although I chose it partly tongue-in-cheek because of the canal boat, it is that thing about us trying to control the elements, and it talks in that hymn about the self-appointed limits of the sea. One of the reasons that the canal boat is actually relatively safe, of course, um, and, and, and unless you're an idiot like me, uh, you, it is actually quite difficult to sort of fall off or get into trouble. But one of the reasons that that is true is because the scope of the canal is specifically and carefully human controlled and limited. Water in, water out, boundaries here. The, 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 the canal isn't that wide. Uh, although I managed to fall in in a lock uh, where it was actually relatively deep, on the whole, if you fall in in the canal, do you know what the first safety procedure is? Stand up. <laughs> yes, because it's fairly likely, unless you're very unlucky, you'll be standing on the bottom and you'll be in two foot six of water. And I mean, it's, you know, the, it's, it's, it's not. It is not the you know, uh, massive, upon the chaos, dark and rude, who made his anger. Well, I mean, if that was, if we wouldn't go on a canal boat if the weather was like that, would we? So there's, there's something in today's service about us trying to shackle the environment, trying to rope in the power of the sea and, and so on. Um, and, and something about the scale of faith. And we're going to have our uh, readings. We're going to start with... Um, Luke 17, and I don't know who's out. Oh, uh, Leslie's going to read for us. Bacon rolls and reading. There are days when people should get little stars for good behaviour. Thank you. And coffee afterwards. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so this is Luke uh, chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. <clears throat> the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. They didn't say please, I note. He replied, he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Or won't he rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So, you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Amen. And now after that slightly stark reading, uh, we have uh, Psalm 8. Do we have a reader of Psalm 8? Ah, yes, Christine, sorry. Thank you. A Psalm of David. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Because of your enemies, the silence, the foe, and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? the son of man, that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Just, uh, just take a moment to pray while we 
uh, and then we're going to sing our next hymn, um, which I'm not sure we know. At least uh, uh, Ruth didn't know it, and if Ruth doesn't know it, we're in trouble. Um, but let's, uh, we'll just take a moment to, to, to reflect on those readings and to pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the things that you show us. Help us to so hear your words, to understand what it is you're trying to say to us personally. And so we bring these prayers in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it goes like this. It's down to the mountain the river flows. It's 377 if you're singing it at home and you're using the book. Um, what does it sound like? Do you want to play us it through once? I will play it through. Ruth will play it through for us with the, the one verse and one chord. Does Sorry? Does, does anyone know it? Does anyone know 377? <laughs> Goody two shoes. <laughs> Thank you, yes, we've got one person who knows it, so uh, yes, it goes like this. Oh, I think it goes like this. <laughs> the wind reflects words wherever it goes, and over the fields, the river is rushing and the river is near. what it said with dance in there okay let's let's give it a go get up and dance if you can uh, don't worry if not uh, do feel free to sing with enthusiasm from your seats um, better put your cups and things aside at home folks if you're gonna dance because if it was me you'd probably fall in right so let's sing together three seven seven See, that's more like it. We're on the river and the canal boat and it's all working and the river's with us and it's a bit, bit more than the, bit better than the peril on the sea bit, isn't it? Oh. Right, so we've had a fantastic reading, uh, two readings, and uh, the indication in the Bible reading sounds pretty mean to me because at a superficial reading, at a first glance, I imagine it's a perfectly natural reaction to look at that and say... Well, first of all, we've got servants, and the servants get treated pretty meanly, and in the end, the uh, servants are told to get on with their duties and do what they're supposed to be doing. 
Now, the first thing I would say is don't get hung up on the slaves and the servants because this is a story. And like any good storytelling exercise, you take the nature of the world around you and then you use that in order to make a point, all right? So in a sense, the servants don't matter. Why? Because it's more to do with this thing that we said about us trying to control the elements around us. Now, I was rather worried, bearing in mind this is going to be a relatively short reflection because it's communion. Um, I was a bit worried that Leslie was just about to steal my thunder completely. Either that or she's read the stuff that we sent out. Because she said, they didn't say please. (laughs) And that actually is fundamental to what's happening in this reading. It's about the relationship between us and God and the comparison. And when we look at that psalm, what Psalm 8 is doing, it extols the magnificence, the wonder, the the, the sheer power of, of God. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? In comparison to the sheer power of God, let's not make any bones about this, okay? Let's not make anything about it. If you imagine, just for a second, I mean, it's really hard for human beings to do this because we're not designed to consider the infinite, okay? It hurts our heads. I don't know if you've ever done that thing where you lay on the ground and look up at the night sky when the stars are above you, okay? And, and you know the joke, don't you? There's, there's two people laying on the ground and saying, looking up at the stars, and one says to the other, do you, do you, see what's ha- what, do you, do you notice what's happened? And the other person says, oh, yes, I can see the heavens, and it speaks to me of God and the wonder of the universe. And the other one says, no, the tent's blown away. <laughs> um, the, you, you lay on the ground, and you look up at the stars, and then it, just picture in your mind that you're doing something like 36,000 miles an hour and through the sky. You're going 36,000 miles an hour around the earth and you're pinned to it like that. And I'll tell you that once you get it into your head, the sheer scale of just the earth and the stars, and then you start picturing the distances between the things. I think we might be doing this in messy church in a little, uh, in ne- next time. Come to messy church and learn all about the distance between the stars. You know, if, if the earth is about this size or something, you know, the, 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 uh, the sun is, is in by where Debenhams used to be, you know, and, 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 and Pluto's at Warner's End or whatever, you know, even when the earth, it's, the distances are huge, and that's just our solar system. So God had the power to create the universe, and yet... And, and, and by comparison, our lives, our, and we look at God and then we treat God like he will do what we tell him to do. You see, it's not about slaves and servants. It's about that kind of unnatural arrogance of human beings. The whole world centers around me. All right? That, that's what we tend to do. Isn't it? I, I'm not saying you're all horribly selfish. I mean, it's just quite natural for us to place it. It took the world centuries to realize, thousands of years, to realize that the universe didn't go round the earth. We figured out that the, that the earth was round, but then we figured, well, of course, if the earth is round, everything else has to go round it. We must be the middle, right? Turns out, for those of you who know Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, we're just one small bl- planet on the western spiral arm of the universe. Uh, of the galaxy, and uh, you, you know the phrase from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? You, you, think, you think it's a long... Sorry? It's mostly harmless. Yes, thank you, Janet. Yes, it's mostly harmless. Don't panic, isn't it, across the cover? But, but it actually says, it says, you might think it's a long way to the shops, <laughs> but that's peanuts next to space. <laughs> the galaxy's huge. The world is huge. Seven billion people, all God's creation. Why am I going on and on about this? Well, as we come into this autumn season, 
as we think about the leaves falling and the seasons changing and we've got environmental issues and all the rest of it, we have to remember to have some humility in the face of God's creation. And that's all this reading is really about. That hymn, For Those in Peril on the Sea, talks about how the sea, unlike the canal, is ungoverned. It's only governed by the nature of God's creation. And that's big, and it's, and it's vast. And, and it's like, like that king that stood in the water and tried to make the sea go back. Imagine standing in front of God, as they do in this Bible reading, and say, without please or thank you or anything, it's just, make this happen. God, fix my life. Sort this out for me. Well, not surprisingly, Jesus turns around and says, let me tell you a little story about people who think that their master is just going to do exactly what you instruct them to do. You know, just have a bit of humility here. And just remember who, you know, yes, we get the absolute privilege of being able to pray and talk to God, and God, on the whole, gives us the answers to the prayers that we want. Yes, we sometimes get a no, but on the whole, you know, I mean, there's the big project we've been talking about, the wall of answered prayer. And one of the reasons we can even do that is because there are millions of millions of people who have had prayers, massive prayers answered, and God has responded to their prayers. But those are usually pleas for help. They're not demands, and that's the difference. Lord God, we need your help. The way to treat the master, the, the way to treat God, is to show respect. Actually, it's the way to treat one another, isn't it? I mean, not being funny, I mean, you're not the boss of me, and I'm not the boss of you. I'm certainly not the boss of Ruth. And, I mean, we know, we know, don't we, that, that, that we're, even as equals, our first response, even in an equal relationship, is to say to the other person, please, would you mind? It would be helpful if we ask politely, we don't assume, we don't make demands. And yet of God, of God, God of the vast seas, of the autumn weather, of the storm, God of the vastness of creation, fix my life. Why have you let me down? Why have you not sorted out all my problems for me? Well, hang on a minute, that's not quite how it works. So, my little reflection went like that. I, I wrote it down in here. At the end of the day, I said, because I was trying to be clever, at the end of the day, it's a two-way street. Faith without relationship is possible, but very odd. And saving the world by not being connected to it is possible, but also very odd. Unless you want to live on the moon or on a canal boat with no connections to the rest of the world, which actually we've disproved this morning, haven't we? We are all stuck in this together. By expecting us to do our part, God also reassures, reassures us that we are not alone. So we stay connected. So the reason our relationship with God has to be a conversation and a two-way street, and maybe even if you look at the Old Testament model, even a bit of a negotiation, is because actually the whole thing doesn't work unless we are in relationship, in, in connection with one another. We could be a church on our own, couldn't we? As an individual, you could set up a you could set up something in your garden and you could worship in the garden and in your garden shed, and it would still be a church. God wouldn't turn around and say, but it would be a bit odd. We want to save the planet? Well, you're sure you can try it on your own. I'm sure you can go out there and do your com campaigning by yourself and all the rest of it. But if you really want to get something done to save the planet, we do it together. If you want to be a church, we do it together. If you want to sail down the canal, guess what? It's a darn sight better if you do it together. Even if it's only because when you fall in, there's somebody to pull you out. The world works so much better when we are connected. As Methodists, we talk about being connectional, because we're all connected. 
If you saw how many people bumped into people they knew as we travelled down the canal, hello, hello, turns out we're all connected. By the canal, by the church, friendships, and so we do things together. So that's all I'm saying this morning. Stay connected. Don't end up fighting all the battles on your own. Talk to God, but talk to God as part of a team, as part of all of us together. You have individual conversations, but if you want to save the world, we better do it together, because we're not going to be able to do it on our own. Teamwork, folks. Teamwork. Oh, and just in case you hadn't got the message from Leslie at the start, please and thank you. We are going to sing on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist cry. You see what I was doing with this? Peril on the sea, we've sung about being by the river. Now we're on the bank of the Jordan. That's a very big river. So we're on the bank of the Jordan hearing the Baptist cry, 182 if you're singing it at home. And during this hymn, um, I'll be preparing the communion. So if you're um, getting things ready at home, um, this is this is the moment. So 182. As we come into our communion, just to indicate, obviously, we've got a few more people who are joining us um, online this morning. Um, We have just a message from Chris O'Reilly saying good morning to everyone. Um, We we met up with uh, Chris and Eamon yesterday by the canal as well. Um, So good good, uh, good Good morning. We're still in the morning, aren't we? It's just been a long day so far. Good morning uh, to everyone uh, who's just uh, just joining us online now. Lovely to have you with us. We received a gift. Uh, as we go into communion, I don't know whether somebody would like to officially open the gift. The, we, we did a little tongue-in-cheek thing. As we've been going down the canal, we've been opening gifts from each church to the next church is up. And it's on the whole, it's worked fairly well, except most churches brought things that... Uh, were to eat, which meant that the gifts were handed over at the beginning of the trip and didn't make it to the end of the trip. So Lindsay, being a bit more canny, took the gift from Kings Langley and uh, brought it, uh, gave it to me to bring here this morning. I don't think it's edible, but would somebody like to come and open this? Uh, uh, Sheila, you were on the boat, weren't you? You can, you can. 
can be our uh, uh, second to the ambassador on the boat. We've been calling them floating ambassadors. <laughs> there we go. So if you'd like to open that, we'll find out what, what we've been given. And this was also sent to us uh, from Kings Langley Methodist. So this is all part of the linking up the circuit, okay? So this is the gift. It says, it says, presented to, we did try and tell them it was all a bit tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, presented to Hemel Hempstead Methodist Church on the occasion of the West Hearts and Borders Circuit, a canal event, 1st and 2nd of October 2022, by Kings Langley Methodist Church. So apparently you have to be able to see them now. Hang on. So it's in Christmas wrapping paper. No expense spared here. But as I say, I don't know. So what have we got there? <laughs> oh, they're in green boxes. That much I can tell you if you can't see at home. Folks. Ah, thank you. We have, we have received... <laughs> we have received trophies. These trophies were won by Kings Langley uh, uh, Methodist Church Youth Club in the 1940s and 1950s in recognition of sporting prowess. We've been proud to hold them for many decades, but feel that the time is now right to pass them on to our sister church to enable them to bathe in the reflected glory. <laughs> <laughs> there is also a gift of stationery to acknowledge the important importance of the local paper mills along the canal, especially in Apsley and the Croxley area. John Dickinson brought this paper mill, a former flour mill, in 1801. The paper industry, you didn't know this was going to be an educational session, did you? The paper industry was a source of considerable wealth in the area, enabling industrial development, which in itself led to the building not only of many chapels, but also St Mary's at Apsley's, Apsley End. The gift of paper and envelopes were among the last produced by the Dickinson's Apsley Mills before its closure in the 1980s. And it's <laughs> we might have missed we might have missed that one anyway. So this is what's happening as 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 things are going down the canal. Things are getting passed on. I'll put those there for people to look at afterwards. We have received... I suspect that Celia was having a clear out, don't you? <laughs> anyway, lovely. So we, we, a message of love from King's Langley. They, they sent that on to us. Let us go into our time of uh, Eucharist, our time of communion. Uh, there are responses on the screens here. I hope you might be able to see them at home as well. And so we join in. And this is all a celebration of this wonderful creation that was mentioned earlier and, and the nature of our relationship with God. In the beginning, God made the world, all that is green, blue, deep and growing. God's is the hand that created you, all that is tender, firm, fragrant and curious. God's is the hand that created you, all that crawls, flies, swims, walks or is motionless. God's is the hand that created you. All that speaks, sings, cries, laughs, or keeps silence. God's is the hand that created you. All that suffers, limps, lacks, or longs for an end. God's is the hand that created you. The world belongs to God. God's is the hand that created you. Therefore, we join our voices with those of all creation in the unending song of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Before going out into the wilderness of the garden, Jesus sat down to eat and to drink with his friends, to show them the challenge of the way ahead and offer them gifts for that journey. He took bread, sustaining and wholesome, and poured wine, earthy and warming, sharing these as signs of the continuing presence with them throughout time to come. God of the liminal places, send down upon us now, and on these gifts of bread and wine, that same Spirit who drove Jesus into the desert, that we too may be tempted, tempered and strengthened by your presence, and refreshed and renewed through your love. And now, recognising that love's promised 
is also for us in this time and place, we too break bread and pour wine to share with one another. And in that action, we recognize and affirm with joy that Christ is present with us now. And through that time to come, this is the place where we are all made well again. For bread and wine, this place and time, thanks be to God. For the peace that we are promised, which the world won't destroy, thanks be to God. For the hope of heaven on earth and the final song of joy, thanks be to God. Amen. Eternal God, I give you thanks this day for the beauty of the earth and the wonder of life. I give thanks for the changing of the seasons and the movement of the stars. I give thanks for Jesus, my rock and my friend. Bless your world this day, I pray, and use me to do acts of discipleship in it. Be with those who are hungry and do not know the luxury of three square meals, complete with snacks in between and as many hot drinks as I like. Be with those who are fighting COVID and are fearful about their health. Be with those who are fighting addiction and help me to be wary of the things by which I may fall to be addicted. Be with those who are facing violence on a battlefield or in their own homes. Bless every human being, I pray, with grace enough and faith enough to bring them home to you, now and forevermore. For I say it, and I mean it, in Jesus' name, who taught me to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The tent side is open, the table is set. God waits for us to come in from the desert and be refreshed. We begin our communion. You are welcome to come to the table. All are welcome here. We come forward, we take the bread, I say take and eat, we eat it together, and then we take the wine and I say take and drink and we drink it together, and then you return to your seats, going as the kings did in the nativity by the other way. You come this way and you go out that way. So let us share in the meal that Christ shared with his disciples.
this table in the knowledge of his love, in the knowledge of God's presence in and around us, in the scale of that creation that is also part of us. Amen. Turn to the prayer after communion. As we come close to the end of this service, you'll notice that we have, uh, we're a little bit short on time. And the reason we're running a little short on time is partly because I have to go and rejoin that boat thing and because I wanted to actually be say, able to say hello to you before I left. Um, the second reason was, was I left a bit of extra time because of going back to, the, to this more traditional form of communion and I wanted to ask you a genuine question how was it for you because because is it better going back to the old old way yeah uh, and 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 does anyone miss the with the communion coming to you you are allowed to have an opinion honest 
Oh, I, just, I just wondered, because in all honesty, um, when I was thinking about the service today, part of me actually was slightly thrown by the thought that we were going back here. And also, I can't remember how the timings worked. You know, genuinely, I, can, I know how long now it takes me to walk every single row, twice, and, and come back. Uh, obviously, I'd be sad to miss all my steps on the counter. Y yes? No, that's true, yes. I mean, it's, not, it's, it's practical to go back. So anyway, thank you. That was a very, very loose survey. Uh, folks at home, do let me know which, which, which you, just out of interest, what, which you prefer. The, um, the, the last hymn, um, no, no surprises, guess what? It's, it's about having an anchor, uh, it, and it's all about, guess what, more water. But I wanted to conclude with this, in a sense, because this is the final part of those things that we were saying in the reflection. Please and thank you, a little humility in the face of God, and doing it together, it sounds like they're so blatantly obvious. I mean, I could not preach a more obvious sermon on a Sunday morning than saying to you, humility in the face of God, let's plead, you know, say please and thank you to God. We praise God. We thank him for what he's done for us. We offer up our prayers and... You know, we do so in humility, and we do so together, that we are not an island, we are not isolated. When we face things, we face them as a team and a community. And in a sense, what this, coming to this last hymn, is doing is simply saying, if we don't do these things, that's when the anchor drifts. When the basics of our Christian faith drift, when we don't show love for one another, when we don't share together, that's what it means when we say, you know, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Because it's easy enough to do when you're having a bacon sandwich sitting by the canal and everything's hunky-dory. But, you know, there were moments, maybe when I fell in or when we got more stuck on the mud or whatever, and what's the first human reaction when things start to go wrong well we either try to blame someone don't we who put us on the mud not that that happened yesterday but you know it's it goes through your mind doesn't it you know I've, i'll be absolutely honest i mean there are moments when you're there and you're steering when somebody else is steering the boat and you're thinking oh i wouldn't have done that <laughs> And then, you know, that's one human reaction. And the other human reaction is to start being angry at, at, at whoever's caused the problem or whoever we think. So it's one, you find someone to, someone to blame, and then you lose the plot. You know, it's a, it's a human reaction. And we forget to work with someone else then, don't we? Because we become quite difficult to work with. So when anyone ever said that to you? I, I, sorry, I looked over. I didn't... That was entirely accidental. Anyone? <laughs> Frequently. <laughs> me too, me too. The, the, the truth is, is I mean, I've, I've had people say to me, you know, well, that was great, but oh, you're very difficult to work with, you know. Somebody said on the boat yesterday, oh, no, this morning, somebody said this morning, um, I, I will be praying for you. You've had to work with this guy for two days. <laughs> I thought that's a bit harsh. But it, it is, you know, it, it's absolutely true that the key to one of the reasons that we do all the things that we do is because we try to keep our anchor grounded. So I draw that to a close with our final hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life or Will You Start Blaming Everyone Else? So we sing together, um, 645, Will Your Anchor Hold? <laughs>
very tempting to try and change the words of the song to include, will the boat arrive in the hallowed lands of Berkhamsted? Will it end up at Cowroast? We can only pray and hope that it will. So, uh, Lord God, thank you for being with us today. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to share together. And let's close with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.